hello guys welcome back to the show so in the last video tutorial we saw how to use flax wt forms so we made this but as you can see if i type in my name is the show and i click on submit to do the data that i put inside of the field is not persisted i'm not able to store the data the data just goes it gets logged in the terminal but that's not what we want when you're trying to build a complex application, you would like to have the ability to store the data that you put inside your field and then use it for something else later on in the application. So in today's video, we're going to look at databases in Flask. To help us with persisting data, we'll be using the Flask SQL Alchemy extension. And the Flask SQL Alchemy extension provides Flask friendly wrapper to the popular SQL Alchemy package, which is an object relational mapper. ORMs allow us to manage databases using high level entities such as classes and that's exactly what we're going to do so what i'm going to do is basically install sql alchemy and i'll use pip install flask sql alchemy so i'll go to the flask sql alchemy documentation copy this got my virtual environment activated so i'll do pip install flask sql alchemy as I mentioned earlier, Flask SQL Alchemy allows us to manage databases using classes. So what I need to do is to create a class, which will be my model. So what a model does is that the model will represent the data that will be stored in the database. So a model is basically a representation of what we want to store in the database. But before I can even create a model, what I need to do is to create a database URI and store that database URI into our application config. So if I go to the SQL Alchemy documentation, as you can see on this line, it says app.config SQL Alchemy database, and then the database URI is SQL Alchemy slash tempt slash test.db. So I'll just copy this, go into the application and then paste this over here. But as you can see, right, it says that it is stored in a folder or directory called temp. So I need to create a directory in here called temp. So I'll come over here and I'll say mkdir tmp. And inside of this directory is where the test.db file will be stored. So now that I've set the SQL Alchemy database URI to this, what I now need to do is to create the model. So I'll create class to do model. So I've created a class called to do model and this to do model needs to inherit from the db.model but i haven't created a db over here if i go to the documentation again as you saw you need to create an instance of sql alchemy and pass your application to it okay so what i need to do is to copy this and what this is saying is that i want to import from flask sql alchemy i want to import sql alchemy so now i can create the db and create an instance of SQL Alchemy and then pass the app to it. So I will say DB will be this and I will pass the app to it. Now I can pass DB, the model, to the to do model. Just like the to do form, which had the field as class variables, we will do the same thing for the to do model. So inside of the to do model, what I'm going to do is to specify the ID of the model and the ID will be db.column. And then I'll set the ID to be the primary key. Okay. So I'll say db.integer. And then I'll say that the primary key is true. Now, the second field that I would like to store is what the user inputs in the field. So over here, I'll create a field with the name content, which I've assigned db.column, db.string 240. So I'm saying that the characters that it will store is 240 characters. I'll create a underscore underscore str underscore so that when I go to the terminal, I can see the string representation of this model. Okay, so I'll say that def underscore underscore str underscore underscore. I'll pass itself. And what I would like to return is basically self.content and then the ID will be self.id. This will return the string representation of the model. Now, if you look in here, this TMP directory is empty, but watch what happens when I initialize the database. Inside of the terminal, what I'm going to do is to type in Python. And what I need to do is that I need to import this DB from the app.py file. And after I've imported DB, um, I need to initialize the database and basically create, you know, the model that I want to create. So what I will say is that from app, 
import db okay so i need to now create the database if i say for i in dir db print i you can see db has got something called create all which is a method that we will use to initialize the database okay so i'll come over here db dot create all now what this did is that this created a file called test.db inside of my temp directory which is this directory that i have over here so what i've done is that i've initialized the database the next thing i need to do is to import the model because i want to create an instance of the model again what i said was that the model is the representation of the data that i want to store in the database so i need to import the model and then use that for something now that i've imported this I can go on and create an instance of the to-do model and pass in the fields that I want. So I will say to-do and to-do will be to-do model. The ID field is automatically generated by Flask. Uh, what I need to provide is the content field. So I will say content and I'll say content to be I want to eat like so. So basically what I've done is that I've created an instance of the to-do model and I've passed it you know a field that i want which is content now what i need to do is to add the to do to the database because i've imported db i can say db dot session dot add to do like so so i've added to do but this doesn't mean that it has persisted in the database no what it means is that i've added it so in order for it to persist or in order for it to be saved into the database what i need to say is that db dot session dot commit and now i have it saved in the database so now if i say to do i should get okay so there is something definitely wrong because of the way that this is displaying in the string representation i said i wanted the content and the id but it is giving me the model and the id so let's check the class and let's see if i did everything correctly so you can see i'm doing something wrong over here so this has to be like this. This has to be like that. So I have self.content and then I've got self.id. So let's do the whole process again and then we can get the string representation of the model. So now if I say that to do is equal to to do model dot query dot filter by id one dot first and I say give me to do's dot id i get id1 if i say to do's dot content i get i want to eat so basically i've been able to save into the database and the database has got a lot of sql commands that you can use um, you can have a look at the sql alchemy database to learn more about the commands that you can use you can basically order by something you can delete you can get there's a lot that you can do so take your time and have a look at the SQL Alchemy documentation. Have a look at it and then see how this is done. So if I go back into the application, let's see how we can get the data from the form and save it in our application rather than do it in a terminal. So now what I can do is that instead of printing what the user types in the input field, instead of printing that in the terminal, I can actually save that in the database and then use it somewhere else in our application. To do that, what I need to do is to create, like you saw in the terminal, is to create an instance of the model and then store the content in the content field. So what I will do is basically say that if the application validates on submit, what I want you to do is to create an instance of the database. So I will say that to do model will be to do and then the content will be the to do form content dot data like so. I will remove this and all I need to say now is db dot session dot add. I want to add to do so I want to add this and then db dot session dot commit to actually save that inside of the database now when that is saved in the database i get redirected to the slash url this page over here so basically what i can do is to query the database get all the data that has been stored inside of it and basically show that on the page how you do that is basically by saying to do is the to do model dot query dot all which will query the database and give me everything that has been stored inside of it. So now 
I can pass this to do as to do will be to do. So I can go into the hello.html file and I'll have access to this to do. So if I go into the hello.html template, I'll put a HR tag over here. And what I will say is that for I in to do, and as you saw in the tutorial, I need to end for what I want you to do is to give me the data. So what I can say is that give me I dot content like so. So if I now start the server and then type in something, now when I submit this, I get will this work over here. As you saw, the data has been stored in the database and now I have it here. If I do that same thing again, and I'll say, yes, this is working. I click submit to do, I have, yes, this is working. So that is how we use databases in Flask. So the process of creating a database is basically creating a model. The model is the representation of the data that you want to store in your database. Once the model has been created, you need to give it the database URI, store that database URI inside of your application config. And this could be the URI for anything. So it could be PSQL, it could be SQL Alchemy, it could be MySQL, it could be any database that you want. Okay, you just have to read the documentation and get the URI that you need for that database. Once that is done, you need to go into your terminal, initialize your database to get to your database file and basically use it as you please. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.